Right, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Well, the BBC Newsroom live show are promoting a story that the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, has made a statement directed at claims made by the Tory leadership candidates last night and in recent times about a no-deal Brexit. They had Ian Duncan Smith on the show, who is heading up the Boris Johnson campaign, discussing these comments made by the EU negotiator, prompting Ian Duncan Smith to call out the BBC for the false claims these comments have been made recently, when in fact the BBC are completely misreporting it, as they are months old at least. Let's check it out. The official who led the EU's Brexit negotiations, Michel Barnier, has said the UK would have to face the consequences, as he put it, if it opted to leave with no deal. Uh, in a moment, we'll be speaking to Gavin Lee in Brussels. But first, let's go to Norman Smith, our assistant political editor at Westminster. Uh, Norman, between the OBR and what EU leaders are saying, a lot for politicians, especially the two Conservative leadership candidates, to chew over. Because Mr Barnier seems to have delivered a fairly sharp rebuff to both leadership contenders if they think they're going to get a revised Brexit deal, with Mr Barnier saying in terms, forget about it, the current deal's the best on offer. And by the way, if you're thinking about leaving with no deal, there'll be consequences. You'll be hit economically, financially, there'll be human consequences too. He's not specific, but he clearly believes it would be profoundly damaging for Britain. In effect, he appears to be calling the bluff of both Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt. This is what he said. This document is so important and uh, I recognize not so easy to read. 600 pages because we have put into the document with the UK, not against the UK, with the UK, the legal answers to each and every point of uncertainty created by the Brexit. That is the point. It is why this document is the only way to leave the EU in an orderly manner. And if we just left, if we just tore up the membership card? The UK will have to face the consequences. Well, we've heard from Jeremy Hunt this morning, who's hit back at Mr Barnier, saying his approach risks hardening opposition and attitudes towards the EU. And he's accused the EU of putting politics before the economics of getting a deal. This is what he said. I think the mistake that we have made from the UK side is that we thought in the end the Europeans will be rational economically and uh, they haven't. They've thought of Brexit as a political issue and they have thought about the political future of Europe and that has mattered to them. Well, if we had a no-deal Brexit, they seem to think at the moment that we would come uh, we would come on our knees, we would come rushing for a deal because of the economic facts of life. But actually, no deal for us would also be political. We would have European neighbours that are deliberately chosen to make the UK poorer, and that would change and harden British attitudes to Europe for a generation. And I don't think that's something wiser heads in Europe actually want. So that was Jeremy Hunt. What a team... Johnson. Well, I'm joined by the man running their campaign, Ian Duncan Smith. And what's your take on Mr. Barnier's comments? Well, as I understand it, Mr. Barnier made these comments before the leadership election actually began, uh, which isn't quite so obviously known. So, in a sense, he wasn't, I don't think, commenting about what leadership candidates were saying. I think he was talking about what his view was of their deal. Uh, but all I would say is, you know, he would say that, wouldn't he? I mean, he's in the business of hoping. Uh, that somehow he gets his deal through, but it is dead. And the point about it is it's not a case of renegotiating it. Boris Johnson has made it clear we're leaving, deal or no deal, on the 31st, but we're not reopening their deal. Uh, we, If we have anything at all, it's a free trade arrangement we would like with them. We should start it straight away. So Boris has been clear about that from the word go. So while promoting this news, not once did the newsreader or Norman Smith point out this interview was long before the leadership contest even begun. They go through all this nonsense like it was said just this morning. Norman Smith actually said Barnier had issued a strong rebuttal of the leadership contenders regarding them seeking a new deal. Ian Duncan Smith instantly calls it out as an old interview and in no way connected to anything either Boris or... Jeremy Hunt. I'm so sorry, Jeremy Hunt. I've never said that before in my life. It's usually men who say that. ...had said since the start of the leadership contest, yet the BBC are promoting this like it's recent news. This is just more biased Project Fear bullshit. It's old news, so why is the BBC even reporting it? The following report on the same show did not even feature the Ian Duncan Smith interview I'm showing you here. They changed it to Sam Gima, who said the exact same thing Ian did about it being an old interview, proving the BBC is just running a bullshit story with no substance. 
Let's continue. How do you respond, though, to the fact that EU leaders clearly think Britain is bluffing when it comes to no deal? They say you haven't put in place the preparations. Mrs May didn't even mention it. You're not hmm. serious. Well, of all the things to come out of these interviews, the posturing around the deal is not the issue. Boris has been very clear. If he's elected as Prime Minister, we're leaving on the 31st, come what may. But what was really interesting about this is not what they say about the deal, but it was the opening up to know that, one, they knew from the word go we hadn't completed our planning and that we'd stalled on it, which I think is an indictment of the Chancellor and many others. It meant we had no negotiating position at all. And two, uh, that as far as they were concerned, she never, the Prime Minister never once said, we are able to leave without a deal. So it was off the table pretty much, it appears, from day one. So Boris Johnson has been correct in what he said, which is you can't possibly talk to them as a partner if they have no knowledge of your bottom line. And the answer is we need to make preparation. Boris has said it will be accelerated. We will be ready to leave by the 31st. That's the key principle. And yet Mr Barnier clearly believes, to quote him, there will be consequences. There will be financial consequences. There will be economic consequences and human consequences if we choose to leave without an agreement. Yeah, again, I don't mind what Monsieur Barnier says about consequences. There are always consequences to every action you take. But is he right? I don't actually believe that uh, he is right in terms of what can happen. And as Boris Johnson has said time and time again, we are open to an arrangement, but not the deal that they've got on the table. What we want is a simplified process, which is around free trade. He said it on the platforms, he said on television. And I, I bear in mind, these comments were made by Monsieur Barnier before... Boris Johnson has actually entered the race and a platform and made his position clear. So it's up to them how they behave. But, you know, if they want to avoid their consequences, then they will need to do an arrangement with us. But otherwise, we will be ready to go. The public has said, leave by the 31st. Boris Johnson is the only one to have said, we will leave, come what may, by the 31st. Then we can take on uh, Mr Corbyn and the Marxist Labour Party. So Ian calls out the fact we know Philip Hammond has actively prevented preparations for a no-deal Brexit. I reported on this the other day when the story broke, which Ian Duncan Smith considers an indictment of the Ramonian fuckpig Hammond and the rest of his undemocratic chums who have done all they can to frustrate Brexit and weaken the UK's position, which prompts the BBC tosspot Norman Smith to continue asking about this old interview with Michel Barnier and the so-called consequences of a no-deal. You can actually see Ian holding back laughter when answering these stupid questions about consequences, before pointing out once again that these comments are old as shit and not response to what Boris Johnson or... Jeremy Hunt. I'm so sorry, Jeremy Hunt. I've never said that before in my life. It's usually men who say that... ...has said at any hustings, and certainly not last night's one. This is just another case of the BBC not being able to contain the Brexit derangement syndrome, so they throw out completely false reports of what an irrelevant EU fuckpig has said, who was never going to say a no-deal Brexit will be great, was he? Let's be honest. Ian then goes on to point out that once Brexit is done, they need to deal with Commissar Korbinov and his Marxist Labour Party. At least Ian Duncan Smith calls them for what they are. However, Mr Johnson has also said he believes no deal would be, quote, vanishingly inexpensive. We hear from the OBR today that it would plunge Britain into recession. We hear mm. from the Chancellor that it would be even worse than a recession. <laughs> Sorry if I'm laughing, because every time I hear the Chancellor enter the fray on this one, I just wonder whether he can be more miserable about anything and he has now managed to be more miserable than he's been before, which is pretty deep misery, actually, I have to say. I don't pay any attention to it at all, because these are cooked up forecasts at the end of the day. You take the extremes of the bottom end of a forecast and you rail about that. Truth is, in all the forecasts that we've had so far, no matter what even the pessimistic ones say, the economy still continues to grow. Just they think it might grow less than it would have done, but that's a speculative point. The truth is, Boris Johnson has been clear. The British people made a democratic decision, leave on the 31st, with or without a deal. He's the only one that will deliver that. That's why I back him and support him. And that's why the British people, I think, will recognise they have now at last, I hope, if he gets elected, a Prime Minister who will stand by his word. But isn't the truth you're just ignoring the comments of the likes of the OBR? The OBR is an independent body, doesn't have any axe to grind in this debate, and it clearly states on what some viewers are fairly benign no-deal scenario, 
that the economy will shrink by 2%. As I say, we will see, as everything else, forecasts to forecast. Many forecasts have been completely wrong over the last few years. In fact, I think almost every forecast by anybody from the, uh, you know, literally from the uh, International Monetary Fund right the way through to the OBR and everything else, these have often been quite wrong. In fact, in some cases, budget forecasts didn't last six months after the budget. I simply say, we'll take that all with a pinch of salt. What we do know, which is out trumps anything else, is that the British people voted to leave with or without a deal by the 31st of October. We've already delayed it now. We're meant to leave on the 29th of March. Boris Johnson has made it clear our number one job as politicians is to deliver on what the public said. And he has a very simple principle. We leave by the 31st of October. By doing so, we end this argument, bring the public back together and unite them. And then we take on what is the biggest threat, Marxist Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. So the BBC shit weasel pumps out more Project Fear nonsense, which peaks the moment he mentions the Chancellor, causing Ian to laugh his ass off before mocking the miserable fuckpig Chancellor for his constant Brexit doom and how he does not pay any attention to it because these people like Hammond and the BBC bring up the bottom end of forecasts and run with that to scare everyone into thinking no deal is going to destroy the economy. When in actual fact, they all say even if the economy drops, it will come back up the next year. Norman Smith then calls the OBR impartial with no axe to grind. Of course forgetting the BBC is legally meant to be impartial, but this fake news story they are pumping out now is hardly impartial, is it? And we all know the BBC is anything but impartial these days, going by any of my previous videos on them. So there we have another biased load of bollocks from the BBC. The interview they are showing is months old and not responses to what Boris or... Jeremy Cunt. I'm so sorry, Jeremy Hunt. I've never said that before in my life. It's usually men who say that. Said in any hustings or at any other time since. I would love to know who gives these people permission to report this blatant bullshit. As I said earlier, the following report, they did not include any of Ian Duncan Smith's interview seen here. They went to another Tory MP, like I said, who actually just said the same thing. Are they going to go through all of the MPs until they find one who does not know it's an old interview? What a complete joke. Well, I'm going to end the video there, guys, anyway. The Bias Broadcasting Corporation gets made to look stupid again in their attempt to push Project Fear against the no-deal Brexit and are ready to outright lie now. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below, as always. Leave a like, subscribe, and share the video as it helps the channel a lot, and I'll see you all in the next one.